Un cucio. President, please be seated. The court is now back in session and the floor is given to the international co-prosecutor to put further question to this witness. I would like to tell the co-prosecutor and the civil party that you still have one session this afternoon. Que les avocats des parties civiles et les accusations disposent encore d'une session. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, could you tell the court so we have a better idea? How far is it from Phnom Penh to where the first of January dam was built? Can you give us an estimate, either in kilometers? or tell us how long it takes to drive in a vehicle. Answer. From Phnom Penh to the 1st January Dam, it is about 115 kilometers. Uh, this is my rough estimate. Perhaps it's above that or lower than that, or shorter than that. During the DK period, do you know how long it would take in a vehicle uh, to travel between Phnom Penh and the first January dam? Answer. If we are traveling today, we have uh, smooth roads, new roads, but the road is still under construction. I think by a vehicle, we would spend uh, two to three hours. But if the road was uh, in good condition as before, I believe uh, it will take only two hours from Phnom Penh to the 1st January Dam. Sir, during the DK period, um, did you ever see visitors from Phnom Penh come to the 1st January Dam. Answer. There were visitors. They were from Korea and China. As for ordinary people, I uh, uh, rarely saw them visiting their place. Sir, did you ever uh, see film, films being made or film crews at the dam site? Answer. At, on the inauguration day, there was filming, and, cela a été filmé. and people were asked to carry us, and the film was shot. On a demandé aux gens de porter de la terre, et alors tout ceci You've est already filmé. told us about on one occasion, Kai Pok told you that Angkor was visiting. Do you remember if there were other occasions when leaders from Phnom Penh visited? Answer. I do not recall it. I do not know them all. Je ne les connais pas tous. Some people, they told 
me some of the names, uh, but I do not recall them all. Okay, thank you, and thank you, sir, for keeping your answers precise and not speculating. We appreciate that. So, before any of the visits of the foreigners or the inauguration ceremony that was filmed, did you ever receive instructions about how to prepare for those visits? des instructions sur la façon dont il fallait vous préparer, vous préparer cette visite. But if uh, there was filming, filming there, uh, we were asked to work hard and uh, carry a uh, and uh, the head of the group uh, needed to uh, be in the front uh, and uh, he was asked or he or she was asked to uh, work hard and carrying earth okay thank you if time permits i will show you a short video later but sir i want to ask you to clarify a few things that were recorded as having you that you said during your 2008 interview. And the first one occurs on the fourth page in English, the fifth in French, and in Khmer, the ERN is 0023-9909. You answered that Vut told me, that's you, sir. I'll begin again. Vut told me that if anyone was lazy, I had to report that to upper level, for instance. Fever and convulsive fever and trembling, tractor fever, truck fever, fever but with an appetite, ideological, that is psychological, fever. Sir, what did you mean by explaining that Vut told you you had to report these various types of fever? Answer. The meeting frequently mentioned about this type of disease. Ce type de maladie était souvent évoqué dans the les The meeting réunions. mentioned about those who had uh, ideological uh, fever or some uh, might have a fever or truck fever. Certaines personnes avaient la fièvre. Well, what did that mean, for instance, truck fever? Does it mean a person is physically ill with a high temperature, or does it mean something else? At that time, people fell sick. They physically, they were physically sick, and uh, they were agitated allegedly sick. I uh, do not know whether they uh, had any intention. Uh, people were accused of being lazy, but actually they fell sick. And uh, if they fell sick, uh, and if they were being accused that they were lazy, usually uh, Khmer Rouge says they had Truck fever. Actually, I, it is better not to report on them. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. And then on the next page, you were answering a question, and again, this is page. This would be page five in the English version of the statement. Page six in French, and in Khmer. ERN 00239910. You said, since there was not enough food, 
most of the people were emaciated and fell ill. The investigator then asked you what were the living conditions there, and you talked about how people slept in buildings with men and women separated. And then you said living there was unhygienic. Each team dug a latrine for their respective team. There was no soap and they bathed in the stung chinook. Can you explain what was the hygiene like for those wor working and living at the dam? There was no hygiene in the work site during that period. We bathed, we could bath, but we uh, had to relieve ourselves everywhere in the forest, in the pits that we dug. And uh, there were big plies everywhere, and if we did not uh, wave away plies, uh, there would uh, be many plies during the time that we were eating. Were people supplied with mosquito nets? Question, est-ce que les gens avaient des moustiquaires? Leur fournissait-on une moustiquaire? In community, Answer, no, we were not provided with mosquito nets. Were people, was everyone given footwear, some type of shoe or sandal to wear? Answer, yes, we had a, a sandal made from the of the car. Nous avions des sandales faites à partir des pneus de voiture. You mentioned meetings where these lazy people Question, who had fevers were discussed. Pendant lesquelles on parlait de were there meetings just for fièvre? you que as a village leader and those above you, or were there also meetings vous, that regular workers had to attend? Answer. It was, it was not a secret meeting. The meeting was held in public. Everyone could hear. Yes, okay. I'm, let me break it down. Talking first not about uh, leaders, but ordinary workers. Were they required to attend any political sessions where they were taught Khmer Rouge ideology? President, please hold on, Mr. Winner. You may not proceed, uh, Victor Cope. Um, thank you, Mr. President. I have an objection because I'm, it's not quite clear to me um, what the questions are uh, aiming at. Are the questions looking at the 20 men or women that were under the supervision of this witness, or is he being asked something about the conditions of all 20,000 workers at the dam? Because um, if that's the case, obviously he's not in a position to give any, any evidence to this. So um, my objection would be this, that the prosecution limits its question to the people that were actually um, under the supervision of this witness, those 20 men that he's referring to in his earlier uh, testimony. Otherwise, uh, he uh, is entering into the uh, zone of speculation. Your Honor, I'm happy to break it down, but certainly it's very possible this witness is aware of what happened to people outside this small group he organized. So let's start, Mr. Witness, with the group that you were in charge of, the workers that you supervised. I believe today you said it was 100 approximately. How many did they have to attend political meetings where the ideology of the Khmer Rouge was taught to them?
So people from the commune level came to give the to teach. Is that correct? Answer. They did not come to teach us. They just came to explain us. What did they explain? And so they explained how to do the work. We were explained that uh, we had to uh, work hard so that we could have uh, the irrigation system. We were instructed how to build a dam. And if we uh, worked fast and we si could uh, finish uh, building the dam very quickly, we could uh, uh, farming, have the farming very fast and quickly. Now, was this type of meeting held only by your group, or do you know if other groups at the 1st January dam had the same kinds of meetings? If you don't know, just tell us. Answer. I do not know about it. I knew only what happened in my group. When they discussed how to do the work, did the sector talk about enemies among the people? Answer. Réponse. I have never been uh, in the meeting of uh, the zone Je or, of the sector committee, rather. Du du Sorry, sir, I'm asking you about the meetings. Uh, it's my fault. You said the commune came and spoke to the people. When the commune came and spoke to the people, did they discuss the need to look for enemies among the people? Answer. They discussed the enemy as well. Uh, they said enemies had to remove have to be removed. Uh, we and uh, they Devait said that uh, the worm needs to be removed one by one. Let me start again. My microphone on. Sir, during the DK period, were there marriages in your village? Late 1977, there were marriages being held. Thank you. And from 1975 until late 1977, were marriages prohibited? President, uh, please wait, uh, Mr. Winner. You may not proceed, uh, Mr. Cope. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I have some difficulty with this question on, on marriages. Um, this is the first uh, witness of a of a new segment. We're talking about the 1st January. Then. Obviously, this witness uh, had a role uh, in the construction of this dam within his 20 um, person unit. I have obviously no problems in some questions uh, on his background. Um, 
and what, he, what, what his position was. But if we now move to uh, the regulation of marriage in general and then uh, go to uh, whatever happened in his village, um, I really don't see the point of, of doing that. Uh, it just opens up a, a whole new layer of possible evidence um, that I don't think we should be uh, focusing on right now. We're focusing on the 1st of January then and his specific role. Um, theoretically, it is of course within uh, the this, this scope, but um, I think uh, it's much more um, appropriate to focus uh, with every witness within this segment on his testimony relating to that segment. And if you're opening up now, uh, uh, we, need to, uh, we need to focus on that as well, taking away time from uh, other relevant elements which we should be discussing rather. All right. I'm not sure much of a response is required. The chamber has made it clear from the beginning that witnesses will be examined about all aspects of the case that they have knowledge about. I'm sure counsel's read the statement, so I'm sure he knows that this witness has said that he conducted marriages in his village. So uh, it should come as no surprise to the defense that we're discussing the marriage policy. President, this question is allowed to put to the winners. You may can resume your line of questioning, Mr. Co-Prosecutor. Thank you. Let me, let me try it this way, Mr. Witness. Let me read from an answer you gave in your 2008 interview in Kamai. It's at ERN 0023-99111. It's on page 6 in both the English and French. Excuse me, page 7 in the French, page 6 in the English version. You said... You were asked about marriages, and you said from 1975 until 1977, they did not permit marriages in my sub-district. But starting in September 1977, they did permit marriages. The village chief arranged for the men in the village to marry the women in the same village for fear that they would be single women remaining in the village. I arranged marriages for them. Sometimes 30 to 40 couples married at the same time. So, sir, is first, is that accurate, what you told the investigators in 2008? Is that an accurate description of the marriage policy in your village during DK period? La du Democratic. Answer yes, that is correct. Now, once marriages were permitted, you indicated that sometimes 30 to 40 couples married at the same time. Who was it that arranged these marriages? Se chargeait d'organiser et d'arranger ces mariages. Answer as for the marriage. The commune, people from the commune would act as parents. And for village, we only brought the couples to the marriage place. Nous ne faisions qu'amener les women gens qui allaient être mariés à l'endroit où ils allaient être mariés. Les femmes dans mon village would be 
asked to marry, to get married to the man whom she loved. But the marriage had to be complied with the Ankar policy. And sir, what was Ankar policy on marriages? What marriages fell within the policy and which marriages would have been prohibited? Oui. Answer. Réponse. The war was not over yet. And Anka did not allow marriage to happen during that time because Anka needed men and women to go into war. And after the war was over, people would be allowed to get married. And uh, for some men and women in the, the villages, uh, they uh, have they had not got married yet. That's why the, they were arranged to get married. But who suggested then the partnerships? Who would decide this woman should marry this man? And what was the criteria? Des couples qui décidaient que tel homme épouserait telle femme et quels étaient les critères à prendre en compte pour une telle décision. No problem. Answer. I do not know about the procedure in other villages. And in my village, the man would tell that he loved certain uh, women and likewise the woman uh, would do the same and after that uh, we uh, would uh, make a report to the upper echelon about uh, this. When you reported the couples that were potential partners that wanted to get married, did the upper echelon have to approve that marriage before the couple could get married? Answer. Réponse. Uh, for the upper echelon, they receive the uh, biography that uh, we sent to them, and after that, they would arrange the place for the marriage to Ensuite, take place. Okay, I'm going to move on because I'm running out of time. I want to ask you about another answer you gave on page 5 of the English interview and also page 5 of the French interview in the Khmer ERN is 0023-9909. So you were asked by the investigator, did you personally see them arrest anyone? And you answered, yes, I did see that, but I was unable to do anything about it. The arrests broke the spirits of the others. Many people were arrested and taken away, but I don't remember their names. Later, Bon and Vuk were arrested and taken to Barai Chong Tech Pagoda and they were never seen to return. I knew this because I recognized the security person who worked at the Barai Chong Tak Pagoda Security Office. And a few lines down, you say his name was Chairman Comrade Mao and that he was killed in 1977. Sir, these people that were arrested were uh, in the leadership, is that correct? Answer, yes, that is correct. What reason was given for arresting Bon and Vuk and Comrade Mao? Answer. 
answer. I do not know the reasons because it is beyond my knowledge. You had also mentioned early in your interview that the Sector 42 chairman was told, the Sector 43 chairman was Chan, and that both are now dead or were dead in 2008 when you were interviewed. And that the Beret but a district committee was Sim and Ka, both of whom are deceased. And Balang district committee was Bon and Boot, who we just discussed. All of them deceased. When you say they were deceased, do you know if all of these people, and tell me if this is correct or not, I don't want to put words in your mouth, were they arrested and then they never appeared again, or how did they die? Answer, they were put in the security office and they were taken to be killed. President, please repeat your answer. Some parts of your answer were not, uh, did not go through microphone. Witness, I forgot looking at the red tips of the microphone. Born and Wood. Born and Wood. And Comrade Mao, they Mao were all deceased. They had been arrested. Ils ont été, ils I uh, été did arrêtés. not know why uh, they, were, uh, they were arrested. It is beyond my understanding. Bien de ce que je sais. Question. Do I have 10 minutes left? Try to uh, cover one further topic quickly. Mr. Witness, in your statement on page 6 in the English version, page 7 in the French, and the Khmer ERN 00239911, you were asked about Cham in your area. First of all, before I read what you said, uh, sir, were there a, uh, was there a large community of Cham living in Kampong Tom province uh, when the Khmer Rouge came in your province? Mr. President, I object to this Monsieur question. It's asking for speculation. The, 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 the witness can answer to something what happened in his village, in his unit, and that's about it. He doesn't know anything about what happened in Kampong Tom or the, the, the size of the population. Your Honor, I believe the witness definitely knows more than any of us about how many, what the people were who lived in his province. Uh, it would be like asking any of us about different minorities living in our countries. And then, this is not such a huge place, Kampong Tom province. He lived there all his life. If the witness doesn't know, he can say so. President, the objection le by the defense council is overruled. L'objection de la défense est rejetée. Yes, the, the chamber needs to hear the response uh, from the witness to the question to by the international co-prosecutor. Co and Mr. Witness, please Monsieur respond to the last question if you uh, can recall it. Si vous vous en souvenez, bien sûr. Witness, I do not know for sure. I only Je know about the Tropeng Chuk uh, village, and I cannot say Chuk about seulement. the population in the other Je parts of the province. De la de la province. The, thank you, sir. The village that you just mentioned, Merci, was that a Cham village, predominantly Cham? Principalement Cham, le village que vous venez de mentionner, ou pas La commune commune de d'après ce que j'ai vu à l'époque, 
comprise of between 100 to 150 families. Comprenait entre 100 et 150 familles. Were there many Cham in that village? Is that Question. what you were? Y avait-il beaucoup de Cham? Can you tell us approximately how many Cham were there? Vous pouvez nous dire à peu près combien de Cham il y avait là-bas? I cannot uh, give you an estimate. Réponse, je ne peux pas vous donner de chiffres approximatifs. Ce village était assez éloigné du mien. Il était situé à environ 10 km de l'endroit où je knew vivais. That the Cham people Mais je savais qu'il y avait des area. Cham dans cette région. Did the Cham people have a distinctive way of dressing? So that you les could Cham recognize Cham by the way they dressed. Les Cham avaient-ils des vêtements particuliers qui permettaient aux autres de les reconnaître? If they did not speak, we Réponse. could not say they were the Cham people. Did they pas. speak their own Question. language? Parlaient-ils leur propre langue? They spoke uh, Khmer. Réponse. Il parlait Khmer. However, the accent or their accent was different from Mais the way the Khmer uh, people spoke Khmer. Leur accent était différent. Ils ne parlaient pas Khmer comme les Sir, Khmer le parlaient. Sir, on page six in English, page seven Question. in French, page in Khmer. Page six in English, page seven in French. Khmer. 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 You said this. And I want you to listen to it and then explain to me why you said it. You said the ethnic Cham were considered to be even lower than the 17 April people. The ethnic Cham were forced to eat pork. Their religion was closed down and they were not allowed to worship. Sir, what did you see or hear during the democratic Kampuchea period that made you tell the investigator that? aux enquêteurs dès qu'au juge d'instruction. At that time, uh, from what I saw, they were not allowed to stay in vu, their village. Ils n'avaient pas le droit de rester dans leur village. Relocated or dispersed here and ils there in various other locations. Réinstallé ailleurs. And if they knew blacksmith, then uh, they would be befriended, and they were forced to eat their pork. And uh, they, uh, some of them refused uh, to eat pork, si and they tried to find the porc, salt to eat faire. instead. And as for their religion, uh, religion, or we can say also for Buddhism, uh, the religion uh, was abolished. Eh bien, en réalité, they were les now, qui they were not allowed to worship anymore. Les ne pas non plus Thank you very much, sir, for your patience and answers. I, in your honor, Merci my beaucoup, colleagues Témoin. from the civil parties have for further questions. Merci pour votre patience. Mes collègues ont encore des questions à poser, Monsieur le Président. The floor is now given to the lead co-lawyers for the civil parties. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je cède la parole à mon confrère Ong Kim Soon. I would give the floor to my learned colleague Ong Kim Soon. Ong Kim Soon. Yes, do you may proceed. Le Président, je vous en prie. Counsel Ong Kim Soon. Good afternoon, Mr. President, Your Honor, and everyone in the courtroom. My name is Song Gumsu, representing the civil parties, and I have supplementary questions to what have been asked by the international co-prosecutor through this witness. 
Good afternoon, Mr. Witness. Bonjour, Monsieur le and Témoin. I'd like to ask you questions in relation to old people and best people. This morning, you already replied to the questions by the co-prosecutors on the various categories matin, of the people, that is, the full rights people, the candidate people, and the deposited people. Could you please inform the chamber the distinction between the three uh, groups revenir sur les différences qui séparaient ces différents groupes answer réponse the full bright people les membres de plein droit were considered étaient poor les personnes qui étaient démunies I mean, uh, really poor that they could hardly earn enough for a daily living, du, and that they were living in the base. They will be put into this category. Ces -là étaient dans cette for those who had enough food to eat daily, they will be considered the candidate or preparatory people. Les As for those who were transferred from Phnom Penh or the Cham people, they were considered the depositor people. Thank you. Question. Question. Merci. I'd like to ask you questions in relation to your role in managing the people as, your, as a village chief, that you were promoted to be a village chief from 1975, and then you also received the people from Phnom Penh in the amount of 100 families. In terms of the different categories of people, namely workers and students, which group of the categories were they placed in? Answer. People who had been transferred from Phnom Penh Réponse. Les personnes qui venaient de Phnom Penh were considered 17 April people. Du peuple du 17 April. All of them will be considered that way. Question. Thank you. Now I'd like to move on to, to the construction of the first Question. and the year 6 January uh, dams. You were the village chief and you also led your people to work at the dam construction. How were people selected from the village to work at the dam construction site and who had the authority to make that decision. Answer. Réponse. On the assignment of the people to work at their website, Pour in fact, we received instructions from the commune as to the number of people from each village to be sent to work at the dam construction website during the dry season. Thank you. Question. As on how the people were selected from the village, how did you make that decision, oui, for example, did you make the selection based on the strengths of the people vous in your village or on the age? Appuyez-vous sur la force des gens concernés ou sur leur âge, par exemple? Answer. Réponse. The, the people who were singles I les mean, they were unmarried. We could not touch them as they belonged to their respective mobile units. Concernées, à leurs as for me, I could only make decisions on those people who were part, married, men or women. Thank you. Question. 
in your village and when you engage in the selection process of those married men and women, how many are families, including the best people and the old people, were selected? Answer. There were 100 best people families. Il y avait 100 familles de Then we have de another 100 families of the old, familles all the new people. So nouveau. in total, I had 200 families total, in my il y avait village. Donc dans mon village. Question. For the selection of the people Question. in your village, including de both the best people and the uh, new people, si bien des du nouveau, who were du de base, selected the most uh, to engage in the dam construction? Était le plus choisi ou sélectionné pour aller travailler sur les sites de construction des barrages? Answer. Réponse. In my village, it applied across the board. For those who knew how to work at the dam construction work site, will be sent to work there. And for those who knew how to climb a palm tree, will be sent to climb a palm tree and would not be sent to, to work at the dam. And that applied to both the old people and the new people groups. Question. When you let uh, people to work at the dam construction. Lorsque vous avez emmené Did you les gens provide them with tools? Leur avez-vous fourni des outils? That is uh, through those who were under your avez supervision. Avez-vous fourni des outils aux personnes qui étaient placées sous votre supervision? Answer. Are you referring to baskets Réponse. and holes? Question. I refer to uh, through different aspects, the tools for digging uh, or building a dam. Who were given you uh, the tools or those tools? And what about the clothes and the food? Answer. For us carrying baskets and hoes, we were given by the commune in exchange of unhasked rice. From my recollection, for each hoe that was given to us, we had to give back about 15 or 20 kilograms of unhasked rice. And this exchange uh, program also applied uh, to clothing that was provided to us. As for the earth carrying baskets, we, we made them by ourselves. Question. This is the first Question. time that I have heard about the exchange uh, program of holes with uh, the unhasked rice. Can you elaborate a little bit uh, more how the exchange was uh, done? Who set the, the exchange rate or the, the price? Answer. For each year of rice harvest, Anka would take from us the amounts they Lanka considered uh, the price for the holes that were given to us. And uh, that was done through a list uh, kept by the uh, commerce office. Par le du commerce Thank effet. you. Question. Let me move on uh, from this uh, exchange uh, program. Passer à autre For chose the présent. people under your supervision and that they were sent to work at the first, uh, dam, first January dam, how was the uh, living at the work site organized? Did you 
build accommodation for your people or the accommodations provided to you and your uh, people? Du matériau, vous a-t-il été fourni? Answer. As for the living at the work site, we ourselves had to manage our own accommodation. Nous devions nous occuper de nos propres logements. So that we will be able to stay there at the work site. Nous devions faire en sorte de pouvoir Question. rester ces journées sur le chantier. And your Question. people were uh, sent from your village and tools were provided to you. Village, now, on the issue of making your own hats or accommodation, where did you find the Et material, for example, the woods to build the huts? Answer. In my area, there were plenty of uh, timbers Réponse. that is uh, further up uh, dans cette région. of the first century dam area. So we, we cut the trees and built uh, the accommodation. And we used hay. We shown hay together to uh, make a roof for the hands. However, allow me to say, the, the roof was only good uh, to protect us from the sun Cela and light, dit, but uh, not from the rain. Nous la Question nuit et nous du regarding soleil, mais nous the pas living la condition at the first January Dam work site, and you already replied to the question uh, this morning Vous that you were given thick gruel for meals. Une bouillie épaisse au repas. What about the, the soup or the dishes? De la soupe vous était-elle également fournie ou y avait-il d'autres aliments? Answer. Réponse. For the uh, dishes, we, the village chiefs, would uh, assign uh, some workers to Les go and find food or to go and find fish at the lower part of the area and uh, they sometimes found uh, dry fish uh, called locally katoro. Council interrupts. It's okay. Please uh, continue. Council, this morning La you made a, a response to the co-prosecutor co on the uh, food uh, rations. You said that uh, you were given two meals per day. And allow me to ask whether the meals that were given uh, twice daily were sufficient. J'aimerais savoir si ces deux repas quotidiens étaient suffisants. En quantité. Answer. Réponse. The two meals that were provided were merely sufficient for that time. Of course, I uh, cannot say that we ate our fill as what we do nous today, nous but uh, for that particular period, it was sufficient. Plutôt Question. Suffisant. Do you mean that uh, it was sufficient, just a uh, uh, symbolic uh, sign of it, or was it really sufficient? It is vraiment suffisant, or it is suffisant? Answer. En théorie. It was actually sufficient, although Réponse. I must stress it was not as sufficient as what we eat Mais every day now. Ce pas suffisant au regard de ce que nous mangeons à présent. We had a dish or two dishes uh, for each meal. At least we would have a dish uh, nous for avions our minimum meal. Un plat par repas and sometimes et when there were plenty of food, then we could have uh, two dishes. However, in 1976 and early 77, it was a, a, a drought season, and the food and the fish uh, were not uh, that uh, abundant. 
Question. Now, uh, I'd like to move on. Question. Is there a response to the co-prosecutor this morning that is in relation to your document E3-5255? You said that uh, per day you would be given only a can of rice with a morning glory uh, soup. Did the ration of food have any impact on the general health condition of the workers at the dam or website? Les conditions de santé des ouvriers qui travaillaient sur le chantier de la construction du barrage. Answer. Réponse. Allow me to say the test of food was not that rich. As well as uh, compounded by the lack of hygiene and the overcrowded environment of uh, many uh, workers. Council interrupt. I thank you for your response and for your document. In Khmer, which is 00239908, and in English, 0025. 0044. I'd like to ask you again about what you said about digging canals in your group that each was required to dig three cubic meters of dirt per, per day and night. Is that information correct? President, uh, Mr. Witness, uh, please hold, and Council Antagouche, you have the floor. Oui, M. le Président, merci. Juste yes, une Mr. petite President, précision en français. Je n'ai pas eu le RN. Je ne sais pas like si uh, c'est un problème dans la traduction ou si nous ne l'avons pas eu uh, en français. Je vous remercie pour que nous puissions suivre. Nous n'avons pas eu le RN en Party, uh, Mr. President, I apologize. I only have the ERN for the Khmer and the English text, and I cannot locate the ERN for the French uh, language. And I believe uh, this practice is allowed uh, in this chamber. Thank you, and allow me to uh, move on. Again, in relation to the Dam construction work site. You said that each worker was required to dig three cubic meters of dirt per day and night. What would happen if the quota could not be reached? Was an additional load? Top the current quota for the next day. Que se passait-il le lendemain si le quota n'était pas atteint un jour donné? At the location where I laid my people to work. À l'endroit où mon équipe travaillait. The quota was correct. However, some people, due to their weak strength. They could only do one or two uh, cubic meters uh, per day, but we just try to cover the, for their lack of uh, completeness in Alors the quota. Thank you. Merci. Also in your same uh, document, Dans ce même document, you said that None of your workers had been arrested or sent to be killed, but that happened with their other groups. When the instructions were given from the upper echelon and that the quota could not be reached, Lorsque le échelon supérieur donnait des instructions, when lorsque le quota ne pouvait pas être atteint, les inspecteurs venaient sur les chantiers. Et si oui, quelle solution vous avez trouvée quand vous avez vu que vos travailleurs ne pouvaient pas atteindre le quota Et si vous avez constaté que les quotas n'avaient pas été atteints Answer. Réponse. Actually, the inspector, when inspectors, when they came, 
they did Lors not de, pay particular attention to the uh, actual uh, digging of the dirt. They were more involved in the security matters. Thank you. Merci. You a while ago spoke about the clothing and the shoes. Vous venez de parler des and you said that shoes were made uh, from car tires. Vous avez dit que les chaussures étaient fabriquées à partir de pneus de voiture. Did the people at the work site uh, Pourriez-vous nous dire si Find les ouvriers du car tires so that they can make shoes from des pneus de voiture afin de fabriquer leurs chaussures? President, witness, uh, please hold. Le président, veuillez attendre s'il vous plaît, Monsieur Council le témoin, Copper, Maître Copé, la parole. Um, again, Mr. President, Copé. same kind of objection. Monsieur le Président, um, même objection. If the witness is uh, si confined to uh, the 20 or so people working under his supervision, no problem with the question. If he's asked to answer uh, about the shoes and, si and, and, and clothes of all the other 20,000 people working at the dam site, obviously he cannot answer. So again, I would like to ask uh, civil parties to restrict their questions to what uh, is within the realm of knowledge uh, of this witness. Council may I ask the question, Books makes you draw the conclusion that he can only know about this 100. There can be other sources of knowledge. We'll only know that if once he has answered. Well, then, we, then, then the foundation has to be established. I mean, he can see maybe uh, you know, some of the other 20,000 workers, but in his statement he said he was uh, supervising 20, and going from his supervised group to 20,000 is just too big of a step. Um, and um, he should first give testimony as to the foundations of his knowledge, which is continuously going from one one place to, to another place, making a, a gigantic step, um, covering the whole uh, dam. And that's simply not the way it should be done. Parler d'un petit endroit, par exemple, et puis parler de l'ensemble du du chantier. President Council Hong Kong Soon, please try to follow the modality of questioning by the co-prosecutor. Actually, this morning, the, some questions of the co-prosecutor had been objected by the defense teams, and he then tried to use alternative uh, Approaches Suite à quoi une démarche, une autre which focus more on the personal knowledge of uh, the witness. And I think you should uh, follow that question. Please try to refresh your question. That is, try to uh, sub, uh, subdivide your questions into uh, different uh, sections. Council Hong Kong Soon, thank you, Mr. President. Allow me to refresh my question. Before uh, just then, I ask you a rather broader question, and allow me to refresh that. Comparing your group to the other groups working nearby, did you observe whether car tires could be obtained by your group or by other groups for making shoes? Answer. On the matter of shoes, Actually, not everyone knew how to make shoes. So for those who knew how to make shoes, would make shoes for himself or herself, and then they would be asked to make for others as well. Thank you. Question. I'd like to ask you about the women working in your unit and concerning the health issue of women, in particular those married women. Were they given pet or cloth for their period? Les règles. 
Forget about the sanitary pad as long as you had sufficient old clothing that would be good enough. Thank you very much. I would like to go back to your statement in relation to the filming of people carrying you said, as, a, as the head of the group, uh, you were uh, running, carrying earth in front of your worker. Is that true? Prendre la tête de vous deviez prendre la tête de vos travailleurs et transporter également de la terre. C'est exact. Answer yes. Réponse. C'est exact. Actually, uh, we were happy to have the film shot by those crews. That is why uh, we uh, worked so very hard during the time that the film was shot. Council. In relation to the earth in the baskets that a worker were carrying if the soils fell out of the baskets did Anka punish them? Lanka punissait-elle les gens dont la terre était tombée du panier? Answer. Actually, there was no punishment for workers who spilled over the earth from the basket. Actually, at that time, the, uh, the earth rarely spilled over the basket. Actually, during that time, uh, there were no film. And uh, we were happy to have the film shot, Council. Thank you, uh, Mr. Witness. Because of the time, I would like to move to another topic in relation to the marriage. Uh, you stated that you arrange a women and uh, men to get married. Sometimes 30 to 40 couples married at the same time. And uh, men and women agreed to uh, get married. So you would uh, report uh, to the upper echelon so that the marriage could be arranged. My question is as follows. Were there, uh, did anyone uh, uh, disagree with the marriage arranged by Ankar. Answer. Réponse. Yes, there were some uh, people oui. did not agree to get married. Council, thank you. What happened uh, to those who refused marriage? Et que se passait-il alors pour ces personnes qui refusaient de se marier? Answer for those who refuse marriage, nothing happened to them. Punishment, punishment was not imposed on them. Uh, they had not been arranged. The marriage had not been arranged for them. And when they refused, so nothing happened to them. If uh, if uh, one agrees to uh, get married, and uh, si we would arrange for them. Si Counsel, thank you. You tell the court that Merci. you or commune chief uh, would chair the the marriage. Vous avez dit que vous, what about couple, the parents of uh, the couple who were to get married? Were parents of uh, the couple informed of the marriage and uh, were they invited to the marriage? Answer. The parents did not attend the marriage and parents were not informed. The commune chief chaired the marriage. Militia men, village chiefs attended the meeting. Only these people and the couple who were to be married were at the ceremony or at the wedding place.
Council, I would like to seek your clarification concerning the marriage. Were there tradi music, traditional music played during the marriage, and were uh, reception arranged? Was a reception party arranged, or rather? The low playing floor. Answer. Concerning uh, dishes, food, and traditional music, uh, there were no such a thing. Only we were only allowed to have uh, meals in the uh, dining hall, and uh, the couple were asked uh, to sit close to each other. So couple were sitting close to each other, and after that, uh, Anka would introduce uh, those who were to get married, and the couples would be also asked to make a, resolu a resolution. Usually, the marriage uh, would last about three hours. There was no any lucrative uh, dinner or meals for those who present council. Thank you. Were the commune chief or were did the commune chief or the com uh, village chief allows uh, the newlyweds to consummate their marriage, and where would they spend their time together? Answer. Actually, if uh, the newlyweds had their parents alive, they would go to their parents' house to spend time together. But if uh, the newlywed did not have their parents, the commune chief or village chief would uh, find a house for them to spend time together. Council, thank you. And uh, how long uh, could the newlyweds uh, spend time together? Answer. Actually, in the village, uh, people uh, were working not far away from their houses. So the newlyweds uh, could uh, return home at, uh, after work and they could spend time together. Council, thank you very much, Mr. Witness. You said that the newlyweds uh, were sometimes working uh, in different unit or different work site. I would like to know how many days did Anka allow the newlywed to uh, spend time together after their marriage? Après leur mariage, Lanka permettait à ce couple de passer combien de temps ensemble? Answer: I have no idea about this matter. And I uh, was not part of the leadership. Uh, that is why it is beyond my knowledge. Council, thank you very much. I would like to know, after their marriage, uh, did the newlywed get along with each other? And if they did not get along with each other, what happened to them? Answer. After the marriage, from my observation, I did not see any disagreement or dispute among the newlyweds in my village. And uh, their marriage lasts uh, until now. They have children now today. And if the newlyweds did not get along with each other, si the village chief uh, would call them and explain 
and also give advice. So if uh, they could get along with each other, they would live happily. Council, thank you very much. Uh, mindful of the time, I would like uh, to move to another topic uh, with regards to charm, ethnicity. I would like you to tell the chamber about your village. Uh, you said this morning that uh, you were in manhood for about 10 years. You also said that uh, you were working uh, in the dam sites. And did you know the Parai Chuandai Pagoda? Answer, uh, this pagoda was called Barai Chuandai. I knew Barai Chuandai was the name of this pagoda, but I have never been to this pagoda. Actually, the pagoda was turned into a security office. Council, could you clarify for the court? Or what do you mean by saying it is a security office? Answer. In the former periods, Réponse. people were brought into that security for re-education, and uh, those époque, who committed a wrongdoings, perhaps they would also be sent somewhere that I have no idea. Council. Thank you. Uh, after the liberation, Merci. after our country uh, received peace, have you ever uh, been to Barai Jondai Pagoda to have a look? Answer. After the war is gone, uh, Barai Jondai Pagoda returned to its normal operation. I uh, have been to Pagoda to join the religious ceremony at that Pagoda. President, thank you very, very much. Uh, Council, you have uh, gone beyond the time allotted to you. It is now a convenient time for a short break. Uh, the chamber will take a short break from now until uh, 3 o'clock. Court officer, please find a proper place for this witness to take a rest and have him returned uh, before 3 p.m. The court is now in recess.